Hi, everybody. Mitch Tannenbaum here. Thanks for joining me today. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the dumpster fire, which we affectionately refer to as the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things are basically all of those computers that exist in your life that don't have a person sitting in front of them, don't have a keyboard and a mouse attached to them for the most part. Uh, example would be your smart TV, your smart refrigerator, your smart dishwasher, um, uh, but what we're seeing now, for example, is that hackers are going after your solar panels. Well, why is that? Well, because the solar panels can be remotely managed, uh, either by you or the solar panel maintenance company. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, hackers have figured out that they can use these things both to attack your own network in, in your business or in your home, as well as to launch attacks against other people. And then when the cops come looking for where this garbage traffic is coming from, they come knock on your door and say, uh, well, why are you uh, attacking these guys? And you're going to say, I don't, I don't know. I'm not doing anything. What are you talking about? Um, so so that's kind of the nature of those kinds of attacks. Um, you know, we are seeing an attack going against a particular uh, solar panel maker. Um that uh you know has uh thousands of of systems out there that is happening currently um there is a uh a malware family called the mirai uh, malware it's been around for about well since 2016 whatever that is eight years now seven years and uh, uh it it did a, when it first came out it did a huge amount of damage because it took over all kinds of, you know, routers and all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, we have seen attacks against TVs. In fact, I believe it's Samsung as a vendor says, uh, don't have any sensitive conversations in the same room as your TV is in, assuming you have a smart TV. And once these things get infected, then that acts as a launch pad for uh, the bad guys to go off and attack the rest of your network. Uh, ignoring the fact that, I mean, even, you know, as bad as the fact that they may be, you know, listening in and watching, turning on the microphone. I saw uh, Britain has just passed a law that allows the cops to turn on the microphone and the camera in your smart devices uh, if they, um, I, I, I guess they have to get some kind of warrant. But, um, uh, you know, assuming the cops can do that, uh, anybody else can do that as well. Uh, so that's the world of the internet of things. It's, it's kind of where computer security was um, 15, 20 years ago, probably something like that. I mean, for example, when was the last time you patched your dishwasher? You said, patch my dish. What are you talking about? Patching my dishwasher. You know, my dishwasher broke a few years ago and the folks came out to repair it. And, and uh, before they left, they had to patch my, the dishwasher. They said that, um, they were not allowed to close the service order until they patched it. I said, well, what's the problem? I said, well, you know, they can catch fire. Um, you know, I guess that's kind of a problem, right? If your dishwasher catches on fire and burns your house down. Um, now, that particular one was not a malicious attack, uh, but we've seen plenty of malicious attacks against smart devices. You know, everything from smart toaster to you know, a uh, smart TV. And, and of course, those things are not isolated on their own network. They should be isolated on their own network. But for the most part, they are not isolated on their own network. So that's an important thing, too. And, and you know, uh, if you have the opportunity, and this is fairly easy and inexpensive ways to do that, um, to isolate them. I mean, you can do it at, at, at different levels. Uh, but uh, there's easy ways to do it that don't cost a lot of money so that the those smart devices can't get to um, the rest of your network. Another one which we've seen is this has been a real problem is uh, security cameras. You, know, you sort of think that security cameras ought to be secure, but they're not. Um, and in particular, those nanny cams, you know, because they're made in China, like most things are made. And they are the cheapest thing that they can get away with because price is the only thing they really care about. In terms of selling it, you're not going to go buy a, a $500 nanny cam. That's just not going to happen. So, um, you know, those things are never patched. Uh, they typically all have default passwords. I heard a story um, 
it's kind of an interesting story, scary, but interesting. Um, there was a, a, a group of, um, of security cameras that were compromised and that uh, people have these security cameras inside their house, which is a bit unnerving to me, uh, and uh, in particular in their kid's bedroom. Uh, and uh, there were uh, hackers, pedophiles, who were selling access to these cameras in the kids' bedrooms. Obviously, the kids do what kids do in their bedrooms, uh, which includes taking off their clothes. Um, and uh, uh, there was a group of moms somehow that heard about this. Um, they sort of uh, had, a, had an idea that this might be out in California. And I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but they posted it on a Facebook group to, of of moms uh, and said, does anybody recognize this room? And somebody recognized the room and they uh, eventually, you know, got to the parents of uh, those kids and, said, you know, by the way, you know, this is being recorded and, and, and bartered on the dark web. Um, you probably ought to remove the camera. From your kid's bedroom um so you know it's like i said it's, it's probably more than a bit of a dumpster fire it's a it's a big dumpster fire to be honest with you and if you need help sorting that out either you know in a residential environment or in a um, business environment then uh, please reach out and talk to us uh and until next time Turnkey Cybersecurity and Privacy Solutions offers the complete cybersecurity program for small to medium-sized